to apply in process two zero. Connected to line process two zero. Connected to line process two zero. Thank you, Vera. Let us go in heart and mind to see what has come to pass. Let us go along with Mary and Joseph. Let us go with the shepherds. Let us go with the wise ones. Let us go with the poor and the humble. Let us go with all the world, with all the peoples of the nations. Come, let us worship. Come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord.
me sing our way to Bethlehem. The children will show us how to go. The little town we seek sits in the hill country some 10 miles south of Jerusalem. For thousands of years, the houses have gathered there on the hilltop like a family breaking bread. Bethlehem means house of bread. In the center of the village is a small inn. On this day, it is overflowing with people, seeking sleep and a place to eat. Behind the inn is a dark stable. A gray donkey chews his barley and broken straw while a weary cow leans and rests after a day of plowing in the valley. A nearby sheep is nearly asleep. As night gathers, the last two travelers come slowly up the road. Look, there is a young woman about to be a mother. She is walking with her new husband. There are Joseph and Mary from Nazareth. They have walked for six days to come to this city where King David was born so long ago. They have come like so many others because the Roman emperor wants to count each one so he can take their money as a tax. But it is getting late and Mary is so weary. Where will they sleep? There is no room in the inn. They decided to sleep with the animals. Brighten slowly in the sky. All creation holds its breath. <coughs> comes the cry of a newborn child. In the hills outside Bethlehem, shepherds watch their shadowy sheep. All are, all are, all at once, the dark is lost in light. And in the midst of the light is something even brighter, the faces of angels. The fearful shepherds then hear music in the sky. And a voice says clearly, 
Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by all people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior is born. He is Christ the Lord. Then more angels appeared, a whole heavenly host of them, praising God and singing. Shepherds are filled with joy as they go to Bethlehem and see the barn behind the inn. There they find the holy family and creep forward, overwhelmed with mystery, to find nativity itself in the center of all that love. Another story tells us that after Jesus' birth, others came from the east, beyond the Arabian desert. The camels bring visitors, the wise ones, the magi. They are following the wild star, the destiny they had never seen before. They are following it wherever it goes to find the newborn child of love. And the journey ends as they see Jesus, their new king, and they bow and give him gifts brought with all that love. So now we all come following the star to find God with us. We come as people have come through all the ages to bring our own gifts to the child, God's gift to us. Come forward now, bring your gifts of stars and of yourselves to place around the manger. Show us the way into the mystery of Christmas as we sing. For this night is holy and filled with overflowing silence. I can't help but wonder what the shepherds were thinking as they came in uh, on that holy night. Or the angels, or the, 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 the wise ones from far away, or Mary and Joseph, or the baby. They all had a chance to say a prayer and to offer a hope of what may come and what may, what may yet to be. And we have that chance today. So at this time, the ushers are gonna pass out to, a, to each family a star and a marker. And I invite you to put your prayer or your hope for this Christmas on that star and then place it on the tree behind Larry and Kathy. Your hope and your prayer for this Christmas season and maybe for the new year. Gavin's going to lead us in Silent Night. Children, thank you so much. You can go back now. Thank you. You did a great job.
Today is the fourth and final Sunday in the season of Advent, which always begins four Sundays before Christmas Day. The word Advent comes from an ancient Latin phrase meaning until the coming. It is a season where we get ready for Jesus' birth. With the birth of Jesus, the one we call Emmanuel, God with us, God took on flesh and came into our world. We remember Jesus' birth all those years ago, and we open our hearts and our lives so that God might come again anew. For the first three Sundays of Advent, they were hope, peace, and joy. Today, the fourth Sunday of Advent, the theme is love. The nights are drawing in as shadows lengthen. The light of Advent shines. We are counting down the days, looking forward in anticipation. The clock is ticking, and we want to be ready. What are we waiting for? God in the flesh is coming among us. The time is surely coming. Today we remember God's gift of love. Jesus said to be love incarnate, the word of God born in flesh to be among us. Our scriptures have much to say about love. Jesus says that the most important commandments are that we love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and that we love our neighbors just as we love ourselves. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 38 and Luke 10, verse 27. Jesus also instructs us to love our enemies and pray for those who, who persecute us, Matthew 5, 44. Jesus told his disciples, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you, John 15, 12. The author of 1 John says that God is love, Beloved, let us love one another because lo love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, and God is love. 1 John 4, 7 through 8. Our Advent symbol of hope was an anchor to remind us that our faith in God anchors us through the storms in life. Our Advent symbol of peace was a dove with an olive branch. Our symbol of joy was a tree. Today, our Advent symbol of love is a heart. As the music begins to play, a basket will be passed. You're invited to take out a heart charm as a reminder of God's love for the world. Charms are available from previous weeks if you missed any. Together, they remind us of all the ways God has come and is coming this season.
Today I'll be reading Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. This section from Luke is often called the Magnificat. Before Jesus was born, Mary speaks these words while visiting her cousin Elizabeth. Excited for God's presence in her life and what God is doing through her, pray with me. And Mary said, I'm bursting with good news. I'm dancing the song of my Savior, God. God took one good look at me, and look what happened. I'm the most fortunate one on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. But God, who is very faithfully set apart from all others. God's mercy flows in waves after wave on those who are in awe before God. God bear God's arm and show strength scattered the bluffing birds. God knocked tyrants off their high horses, pulled victims out of mud. The starling poor sat down to the banquet, the cattle's fish were left out in the cold. God embraced the chosen child, Israel. God remembered the pile on the mercies, piled them high. It's exactly what God promised beginning with Abraham and right up to God. Thank you, Dane. Before Jesus was born, before Mary was even pregnant, an angel, a messenger from God, came to her and told her what was going to happen. Do not be afraid, Mary, the angel said. Angels in the Bible almost always say to people, do not be afraid. Which makes me think that if you're visited by a real angel, maybe they're really scary looking. But do not be afraid, Mary, the angel said, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, the angel continued, and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. For a moment, Mary was confused about how this could even be possible. In one of my favorite lines in all of scripture, the angel reassures her by saying, nothing will be impossible for God. And remarkably, Mary says, okay. She says yes to bearing God's child. She says that she will do it to bring Jesus into the world. Despite her age, She was very young, despite what others might think about her, despite what Joseph or her parents might say, despite all the difficulty of pregnancy and birth and parenthood, Mary says yes to all of it. Here I am, she says, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. There are many things that are remarkable about Mary, but what strikes me most today is her trust. She trusts the angel that his words are true. She trusts Joseph that he will respond well and care for her. She trusts herself to be strong enough to do it. And she trusts God to lead her through it all. Mary is, at her core, one who trusts. And because of her great trust, God is born into this world. It is often hard for us to trust, and for good reasons. We don't trust other people, especially ones we don't know. We don't trust organizations or institutions, and sometimes we don't even really trust ourselves. We worry that we'll be taken advantage of. We worry about making mistakes, and we worry that we'll end up embarrassed or shamed. It's hard for us to trust. But Mary 
trusts. And because of her great trust, God is born into the world. It makes me wonder, what would happen if we were able to trust? What could this world look like if we really trusted one another? How would we live differently if we trusted ourselves that what we have to offer is enough? How would we feel if we really, truly trusted God to lead us through it all? Mary trusted, and because of her great trust, God was born into the world. If we trusted, could we deliver God into this world too? May it be so. Amen. On this day that has become synonymous with gift giving, let us reflect on the gifts of love, hope, joy, and peace. Let us respond to the generosity of the giver of all things beautiful and giving of ourselves, our talents, and our resources. Let us give generously to share God's beauty in our community. This morning offering will now be received. join me in the offertory prayer. Generous God, we give thanks for all that you have given to us, and most especially for the gift of your own presence. Born among us this night, the one we call Emmanuel, God with us. Bless these gifts that we have brought and gathered, that they may bring glory and honor to you, and beauty and peace to your creation. Amen.
This is the first time that we've had Simmer on the steps and they came up without me asking them to. Uh, before we get started, I just want to thank um, our guests from Surgery Bay, Kathy and Larry Peterson, for being our grandma and grandpa this morning. Thank you to Frank Boutnick for the stars. And there's many others to thank, but I especially want to thank um, the Christian Ed Board, parents, and most of all, the children for bringing Christmas to us this morning with their message of love and hope and peace. The most difficult decision I've had to make in several months, I'm going to share with you now. And that is, who's going to open the box? <laughs> but, Elroy, it can't be you, I'm sorry. Um, but we do have two people that bring us light faithfully week after week, and um, this box is a way of bringing light to us. So I'm going to ask Dane and Olivia to come up here and open the box. Our acolytes, here they are. idea. Here we go. It's still in here. Um, children, thank you, and uh, what's in the box is a way to thank you and thank God for bringing light into our world. So all of you this morning, get a stocking, and after you get your stocking, you go sit down with your parents, okay?
It's always a wonderful problem to have when we have more children than we're expecting. Uh, there are extras in Mark's office, so we know of a couple kids that didn't get one, but if there are others too that didn't get one, see me or Mr. Mark after church and we'll make sure you do, because we do, we've got more. Will you pray with me? We bless you, O oh God, our mighty power, for you have not forgotten us, your children. We bless you, our God, for your great gifts to us, creation that is fragile and fascinating, scripture which reveals to us your truth. And you bless us with your forgiving love, with the vision of your kingdom, shedding light into our darkness. Bless us and disturb us, God, with that vision of your kingdom as we voice our hopes to you now. May they strengthen us, reassure us, and move us. We pray this morning for those who are caught up in wars around the world, for soldiers and for refugees, and for those who are holding fast to their love and their hope, we pray. We pray for those who are ill, for the ones coping with pain, fearing the worst, and for health professionals who plan and care for them. God, we pray. We pray for the homeless, so often excluded from what the rest of us are doing, cold and struggling to keep a hold of who they are. God, we pray. We pray for those who struggle in relationships, especially at this family time, when cracks are sometimes kept just below the surface. God, we pray. And for the deepest hopes of our own hearts, we pray now. Into the mess of this world, a fragile child will come, yelling in the night for his mother, needing milk and clean linen like all the rest. We pin our hopes on you, little baby, our God, brought into this world through pain and into poverty. Help us remember, God, this day and every day that you are with us, and today our hope is reborn. Amen. our service are a gift, a gift not from me, but from God. And so I invite you to open your hands in a position of receptiveness for this gift. Take these words with you as you go. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. 
Render unto no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of us all, be with you and remain with you this day and forevermore. And all the people said, <laughs>